There's no question in my mind he's a Hall of Famer, Jenna. And I know a lot of people will point to the iconic moments that he had in Super Bowl 42 and Super Bowl 46. The throw to David Tyree, the helmet catch, which set up the Plaxico Burris go-ahead touchdown. And then, of course, the throw to Mario Manningham in Super Bowl 46 right along the sideline in between two Patriots defensive backs. I mean, B-Dub, you played in the league a long time. You know how hard it is to drop that ball mm -hmm. into the receiver under those circumstances with that amount of pressure. But Eli Manning has always been able to deliver, especially when the lights are the brightest and the pressure is the greatest. And to me, competitive greatness has to account for something. You look at those two Super Bowl runs, I mean, those were awesome runs. He was on the road for all of the games during the Super Bowl 42 run, on the road for three of the four games in Super Bowl 46. Everybody looks at those big moments in the Super Bowl. But if you go back to 2011 and you look at the NFC Championship game, where Eli Manning took an absolute beating against the San Francisco 49ers. I think they sacked him six times, over 20 pressures, but he had over 30 completions in that game. And, of course, he delivered when it mattered the most. So, for me, you can look at the metrics, and Eli Manning is in the top ten of a lot of statistical categories as far as passing goes. But when you actually look at what he did and what he meant for the Giants organization, I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that did it better. What was he like as a teammate? Well, I mean, he was the consummate professional. I mean, he was, the, and I know it's cliche, but he was the first one in the building, last one to leave, and he went about his business in a very workmanlike fashion. You had no choice but to respect Eli and how he went about doing what, what he does. But the thing about it that makes it special is just the level of consistency because he was the same guy every day. And especially when you talk about a city like New York, when you're under a microscope and there's a lot of scrutiny, whether he played well, whether he played bad, he was steady, and I think that that gave the team, uh, uh, I guess, that 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 ability to be consistent. And I think that's that's a special characteristic, especially playing in this town. The people that would say that Eli is not a, a Hall of Famer will say that he was never the best at his position. His best five-year span, 11 through 15, he ranked 19th at passer rating, 20th in completion, and 15th and wins. However, when I look at Eli, I look at the totality of his career. I say playing 16 years and putting up the type of numbers over 50,000 yards, over 300 touchdowns, those are Hall of Fame numbers. Those are Hall of Fame credentials. And being able to play, and you mentioned it, being able to play in certain cities with the type of media scrutiny that you get here in, in New York, it's just hard to do, especially with some of the teams, the ups and downs that you've had in this city. So I, I certainly think that Eli uh, is a Hall of Famer. But but you made a point, and I think people need to understand this. The ability to play at a high level for a long time is just hard. There's not very many people that can say, I'm going to come to work every single day, and I'm going to be the best every single day. Eli was never quite the best. However, he was consistent, to your point, in his entire career. He was very good. And I think because of that, he should be rewarded with the Hall of Fame. It never missed a game due to injury. The, the, it's the, impressive. The, the, the Iron Man streak that was prematurely ended with the Geno Smith start a few years ago by McAdoo is a part of the resume as well. I'm going to approach this from a slightly different angle because I knew this question was coming as soon as it came out yesterday the retirement was coming. And I take these things probably more seriously than I should. And Eli is... I've said before on the show, you can make as strong of a case for as you can against. So, but I wanted to, I wanted to really like dive into it and figure out where do I, how do I really feel? And I'm not going to use the 50,000 passing yards. I'm not going to use the top 10 in touchdowns or top five, all those things because I think the statistical argument in its totality actually works against him a bit because never for all, first team All Pro, no MVP. You know what I mean? Never had yeah. statistically regular season stats. He was a good quarterback, not a great quarterback. So how do you overcome that and become a Hall of Famer? With two of the most iconic, not games, but to your point, runs in playoff history. And that is the part that, to me, was the final check mark in the, you know what, Eli Manning is a Hall of Famer, in my mind. Because it's not just that he beat the 18-0 Patriots. It's that two rounds prior, he knocked out the best Tony Romo team we ever saw, the 13-3 and three Dallas Cowboys, you were Come on, on that team. <laughs> it, the round after that, he knocked out Brett Favre's Green Bay Packers. The, the last time Favre had a chance to win or go to a Super Bowl with the Packers, the 13-3 and three Packers, and then the 18-0 and 0 Patriots. On that playoff run, he had six touchdowns, one pick, and a 96 rating. 
And then four years later, what was the route? You guys knocked out the 15-1 and one Packers, unanimous MVP Aaron Rodgers. Then you knock out a dominant 13-3 and three San Francisco 49er team in a game, like you said, he got whooped in, mm -hmm. he got beat up in, en route to beating the 13-3 and three Patriots. On that playoff run, nine touchdowns, one pick, a 103 rating. And I think it's very telling. Eli and his brother both have two rings. Everyone knows Peyton's one of the all-time greats. But en route to those rings, how did they play? En route to those championships, who was better? Because we can, we, we, when we talk about those Super Bowls, we say, oh, your guys' defensive line. That's Eli, his eight playoff games the years they won the Super Bowl. 15 touchdowns, two picks, 100 rating. That's Peyton the two years he won the Super Bowl. It, it, not just the Broncos' year. That includes his Super Bowl with the Colts. Five touchdowns, eight picks, a 72 rating. Mm -hmm. He was, as great as he was in the playoff run, he was along for the ride. Eli, once the playoffs began, those two years, and maybe the only two moments of his career, he was the best guy. He was as great as your guys' D-line was, as great as those things were. He was the driving offensive force. And if you're going to overcome, to me, what, what is a good but not great regular season career, you have to be able to have that up there. Twice, I was nails in the biggest moments, and I didn't get an easy path. I was against 13-3, and 13-3, and 15-1, and 13-3, and, and he did it. So I, I, I'm surprised I'm saying it, but after looking into it, I think he's got to be a Hall of Famer, can't he? The other thing that he has as a feather in his cap is that he has two Super Bowl MVPs. Yeah. Ain't a whole lot of guys walking around with multiple One five. Super Bowl One MVPs. Five. One of five, and if you look at the majority of those guys on that list, they in Canton. Does so, this... I mean, it seems like it's inevitable that Eli Manning will be putting on a gold jacket. All right, quickly, does his career record bother you guys that he finished? The one, well, again, the 170 and 117, the, the lack of MVPs, lack of all pros, all that works against him. You have to have a, a giant trump card to overcome it. And that's I think enough. those two Super Bowl runs, not just beating the Patriots, the teams you had to beat on the road yeah. in order to get them, I think Playing it does. Playing in New York helps him, too, a little bit. Do you 